doing a video here. I got uh, what looks like chaos here, but uh, this is my NTI Trinity TI-100 boiler. And it's been in service, I think, since 2009. And it's been just fine. But I was thinking, you know, might be good to clean it. And I saw a video on YouTube on how to do it. So I'm going to go in there and clean it myself and see what I can find. Uh, so this is the video on how to do that. Um, I really have not touched this installation since <clears throat> 2009. Uh, at least the main installation. I've got all kinds of craziness going on here. But um, I've got a lot of things here that are kind of tied up superficially. Um, temporarily, but all the, the pumps you can see back there are pumped in, are, 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 are piped in permanent. The um, uh, Some of them are not hooked up, as you can see. Some are, there's the main pump there. Um, I don't remember, that's a Taco 0011 or 009, I forget which. Uh, they're the same power either way. Uh, one's high head, high flow, the other is uh, high head, low flow. And those are the rest of them are 007s. And we've got, I forget which one we got over here. This is basically for my radiant heat. And just to show everybody, there's my manifolds. Um, didn't like the, uh, the stainless manifold I had on the top. Uh, the things were valves, and they didn't tell me that they were valves, and that just was annoying. So now I've got a copper manifold. Uh, good old-fashioned Allen's Plumbing Supply. Thank you, Allen's. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's get back to cleaning this boiler. Uh, see what's up. Supposedly it's pretty easy. So, as you can see, we still have a zone running here. Uh, I haven't noticed any drop uh, in, uh, in efficiency. I haven't noticed really any, any increase in the bills, but supposedly these can get inefficient because they get dirty. Let's see what happens. There's another video on YouTube how to do this, so I'm going to supplement. Um, there's a pull thing down here. You pull from the back to release this. And same thing under here, pull from the back. And of course, I'm missing a screw here. So I'll have to fix that. Somehow this is missing a screw. Yeah, anyway. And there's a a long screw over on the side here holding the panel on and it's this guy here I used an 8mm I think it's probably different than that but uh, I used an 8mm works fine okay so um, don't put these things on tight there's no point um, so we have some uh, screws around the ignite uh, around the boiler section to take off here and uh, what I noticed immediately was that this, which is probably a sensor, actually um, has two white wires. Now the odds that, that it really matters which one goes where, if I put these, you know, take these apart, put them back, the odds that it really matters is pretty low, but I'm going to mark one of these anyway um, with just some electrical tape. That way I know exactly uh, what goes where. That way I can put it back relatively easily. And it looks like looks like these are 10 millimeter. So uh, I don't know what these are, but I gotta take these apart apparently. And we will simply go from there. Alright, looks like I'm pretty much ready to undo this. Um, I want everybody to keep in mind that uh, I'm a dentist. I'm not a licensed uh, plumber, uh, nor am I a licensed NTI service technician, therefore uh, please take this information as entertainment value only and uh, unless you are a fully qualified professional, do not attempt this at home. There's my disclaimer. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to take this apart. One thing that I... I mean, <laughs> just so everybody knows, my my sh my emergency shutoff switch is off there, and my gas valve, which is up there, is off. So uh, there's no gas going to this thing. There's no power going to this thing. So 
what I'm going to do first. It's a spark plug. Hey, look at that. I'm going to take that off. That's pretty easy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, these two. They look like spade connectors. So let me do that. Just to show you, I put some black electrical tape on one of them, and I put a little more black electrical tape on on its mate over here. That way I know exactly what goes to what. Two white wires is no good. Now, they're, it's probably not a big deal, but, you know, I'm going to be picky about it. A um, couple of pointy nose pliers, and that works fine. So, so far, we've got, for tools, pretty simple. We've got a couple of pointy nose pliers. Um, these uh, screws down here are going to need T20 Torx. I've got them on the end of a on one of them in my Bosch tools, which I, I love these things. But anyway, they're quarter inch uh, extension, wobble, and the T25. Or T20, excuse me, excuse me, T T20 Torx. T25 is for the Volvo. Um, and then we've got these, which appear to be 10 millimeter. Before I undo the bolts, I'm going to undo the fan. Um, it looks like a clip here. And there's a sensor in the back. There, there's the wire going to it. I'm going to unplug that. I'm just going to, well, let's see, put my hand in. Ah, feel it. Okay. So this clip has a pressy thing, which is in this orientation in the back of the fan. All right, now we'll do the uh, the Torx things here. When I when I I just lightly did one earlier, and it does not feel like it's on that tight, so I uh, do not need a lot of force here. be sure to put these back in later with minimal torque because they only require minimal torque. All this metal is sharp. Which is annoying, but it's kind of the way metal fabrication is done. I just came up with this idea now. If the wobble tends to flop a little bit, put a little electrical tape on it. Let's see if that works. Looks like it works. If you want the wobble to be wobbly a little bit, but not too much. Well, electrical data does the trick. It should actually be that. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six total. We have the spark plug and the sensor. Now let's do the main bolts. Let's see if they just come out with the notch tool. Yes, they do. One. Two. Keep in mind, folks, you're watching this live here, so I don't know what I'm going to find. I might have no need to clean this at all. I might be... I might have been wasting my money this winter. How did this whole thing just come out? So, we got the burner, which appears to be intact, sensor, igniter, all well, seems to be pretty good shape, needs to, this needs to be vacuumed off, and in there looks pretty cruddy, so that needs to be vacuumed too. So we'll uh, get to it. I'm going to get the vacuum out here in a second, but we'll a little bit of closer look here. So we got some crud. Now in the video, um, the other video on YouTube they showed, gotta use a nylon brush. So I have one similar, just like this apparently. We gotta vacuum that out. You know, it doesn't look that dirty, but it's definitely a at least a little bit dirty. So We'll clean it. And apparently that disc back there, we want to be real careful about that. We don't damage it. Don't know what that's made of, but... Uh, and this essentially would be that, you know. Uh, so, just water, just a brush, vacuum, and uh, that's about that for, for cleaning this unit. The uh, installation is a reverse the removal. And I will try to go over a little bit on that because I think I'm going to have a little bit of a tricky time with one particular part, but we'll go over that in a minute. So this is the best I can get it for clean. You know, I was playing around with that nylon brush, realized it didn't do too much. And this is a stainless, these are stainless coils anyway, so I got a brass brush. And I used it, and it still didn't work that great. So... That's about as good as I can get it. Um, I got curious and was looking at this plate back here. And there is a two and a half millimeter screw there that uh, I tried to remove and it did not budge. So rather than strip it out, which I didn't do, um, I left it alone. But I would love if somebody could describe to me, you know, what the removal procedure for that is, what's behind it, all that fun stuff. Um, I was just going to be curious and see. Uh, it looks like there's been a little bit of damage at the, right at the base of that disc there. And, um, I don't know if that has any effect on anything, but, you know, could replace it. It looks like it's slightly off center anyway. Whatever. Does it really matter? Probably not. Okay. Um, per usual, I put grease on all the threads on everything, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this back together, nice and low torque, just nice and gentle. I'll put it back together, and that'll be that. Can't forget about the burner. Um, what I did with this was I just gently tapped it, and all kinds of black stuff comes off. So I just simply vacuumed that up. The other thing that I did was around, because there's so much junk on the burner there, what I did was I just took the, the brass brush and whatever, I went around this rubber seal, not the, not the inner seal, but I went around the rubber seal and just kind of knocked off any stuff that's on there. 
There's a little bit of corrosion around the rubber seal. Probably next time I take this apart, I'll want to remove that um, and give that a thorough cleaning, but no real need for now. I put grease on all the, or where all the bolts are going to go. And now I'm going to reinstall it. Obviously, you got to check for leaks and everything, so we'll do that next. So I've got this all back together. Put the spark plug thing in. Uh, these two back together, proper orientation. Fan here, part there. Uh, the sensor piece for the fan is on the back side. That's a little tricky to get in. Uh, again, T20 Torx here, six screws, and uh, tighten them down. You know, you can't tighten these too tight. Uh, you got to be real careful because this is just cast metal. It's not really that strong, and the screws are steel, and you will strip it out. So, got to go real easy on that. Um, grease them all up nice and easy, you know, just kind of hand tight. Everything down should do it. So let's see if this fires. Uh, I haven't turned it on yet, so we're going to go for this live here, see what happens. Uh, gas on. Good. Hit the old switch over here. Apparently everything's calling for heat right now. Or first floor, second floor, and zone six is the uh, indirect. This is always fun. I get the temperature gauge. Temperature gauge is right here. As you can hear the boiler spin up, you can just watch this go right on up. That fan doesn't sound too smooth, but she is fired, so... There you have it. Gonna put her all back together, gonna put the cover on, and thanks for watching this video. Again, be real careful with these things. Um, Remember, a boiler is a controlled explosion in your basement, so you want to be real careful. Um, this one seems to be working just fine. I'm real happy. Better than having a service call for Lord knows how much money. Uh, I do want to figure out what's going on with that disc in the back. Maybe I'll get a new part eventually. Figure out how to get that out of there. Somebody could help me out with that. With a video on that, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.